welcome back to my channel so in today's video I'm gonna be doing something I've never done before I guess you would call this a story time video even though that feels really dramatic really this is just me sharing an experience with you guys I share this on Instagram I didn't I did not go into detail at all because I've actually been avoiding going into detail because this story gives me a lot of anxiety and it honestly is just something that like I've just tried burying. I've told this story twice since we went on this vacation. The first time I did cry, the second time I almost cried. And I guess I'll just jump right into it um, so I don't have to prolong this whole story and make it longer than it really has to be. Um, disclaimer, the babies will not be in this video. I have a new video coming out in just a few days. It's just a vlog. Um, so if you want to see the babies, it'll be in that video. Before I really get started on this story, just so you know, I'm not going to say where exactly we went, or I'll tell you where we went. We went to Vero Beach, Florida, but I will not tell you where exactly we stayed because um, I can't. Okay, so let's just start from the beginning. So if you happen to be new here, if this happens to be the very first video you guys are watching, my husband Steve and I have three triplet girls and um, they are a year and a half now, but in December, when they were like 10 months or 11, no, they were 10 months, we decided that we wanted to take our first family vacation. Um, so we booked the trip for May. Was it May? No, it was March. I'm pretty sure it was March. So we booked the trip for March thinking the girls will be over a year old. They'll be walking. They won't be drinking bottles so much so we can go out and feed them real food. And we just really figured like if we're going to take a vacation, this is probably a good time to do it. Um, the place we went was also only an hour and a half from our house. So we figured this is, it's a safe enough distance that if God forbid something happens, we can just come home and, and it's okay. So we ended up going to Vero Beach, Florida. Now, when we went on this vacation, I mean, I call it a vacation, but really it was going to be two nights and three days. That for us is 100% a vacation, but really it was just a, a weekend for us. Now, all along, Steve and I, I mean, we have good attitudes. We know how to turn something around, or if something is not going our way, Steve and I know to say like, okay, let's just, we'll, we'll try something else, or we'll, let's, tomorrow will be better. We're just really good at turning things around and being optimistic about things. Okay, I'm rambling. I'm nervous to even like, uh. We drive the hour and a half there. The girls are great the whole car ride. They sleep, which we figured they would because it was their nap time. We put them in the car right after breakfast. And um, we get there and we pull into the valet area and they call us by name right away. They knew who we were. They said, you must be Mr. and Mrs. Richmond, which we were, and that first impression was amazing. Steve and I were like, oh my God, this is this is great. Like this, if this is any indication on how our vacation is gonna go, then, then we're so excited. So we get there and um, we weren't expecting to be upgraded. We, we had no expectation of that, but we, know somebody that works there and they mentioned to us that this is something that they wanted to do for us they were able to do this for us so when we checked in we didn't mention it because again we don't expect anything but we were hoping wow that would be really cool if we were upgraded so our whole check-in experience was great um we get up to our room it is just a standard room again that's okay that's what we booked it just would have been cool if we did get upgraded but we didn't no big deal um, we did call once we got up to our room and we asked if there was anything available with an ocean view. There wasn't. Again, no big deal. This is what we booked. This is what we got. And it was a beautiful room. We were just hoping for maybe something larger or something with a view because we knew all along that our girls go to bed at 630 and if we want to have a good vacation, then at least go by their normal sleep schedule to ensure that throughout our day we can have a good day and it could be smooth. And then we figured if we could get an ocean view, then we can go out on the balcony and have a drink while the babies were sleeping. That was just our thought. It didn't end up working out like that um, and that was okay. We still were going to make the best of it. So we get there, we check in, we get up to our room, we figure, okay, let's unpack. Now, j FYI, nothing with triplets is easy nothing is checking in is not an easy process getting three babies out of the car is not easy putting them in a stroller when they don't want to go in a stroller is not easy and then we have suitcases bags and and 
I mean, it's not just like a normal amount of stuff, you know, it's, we're not packing for just him and I, we're packing overnight for three babies. It's a lot of stuff. If you guys have one baby, you know how much goes into a night away and all of it is times three. So we're, we're, we are exhausted, but we again are going to make the best of it. So we get up to our room and um, we were just kind of settling in and we have like a portable gate. So I open that, that up for the babies just to kind of keep them contained for a little bit while we're unpacking and settling in. And um, I knew that they were hungry, so I wanted to get them a snack. It was also their lunch time. So we spent some time in the room doing that with them. So by the time we were done, it was probably like three o'clock and we wanted to go down to the beach and see the ocean. And so um, we, again, we're exhausted. We had just traveled and unpacked all this stuff, had the girls lunch and we're just tired, but we're gonna do it. So we go down to the beach, we pack everything, the sand buckets, we bring the portable gate down to the beach. We have two strollers. If you've ever had to drag a stroller through the sand, you know how hard that is. And we had a double stroller and a single stroller. We have a triplet stroller, but there was no way that was going to the beach. Um, so we each had a stroller, a large gate, two large bags, and it was just a lot. So we get down to the beach, we're already sweating, but um, we see that there are open cabanas all over the beach. And we were like, wow, this is great. Thank God there are cabanas, because I was really worried about the sun um, and not having shade for the babies. Obviously I put sunscreen on them, but I mean, th the sun can be exhausting and it's harsh on a little baby's body. So we see the cabanas, we're thinking, great, we go and we set up in a cabana and the their portable tent fit perfectly right underneath the cabana. Um, it takes us probably like 20 minutes to get unpacked again and do the whole process again. Um, by this point, the girls are fussy because they're hot and they're being put back into their gate. They just want to play. They don't want to be trapped in something. Um, so Steve and I are starting to get stressed and the babies are now crying on the beach and there's not many people on the beach at this point. I mean, you know, people go like super early, um, to the beach and then they like all want to go back early-ish, I would say. So there's not many people on the beach. So I'm not really worried about the fact that the babies are crying. Like it's, they're crying. Some, sometimes babies get fussy. What can you do about it? I'm in the gate with the babies. Steve is out side just laying on a chair um which is okay he's allowed to do that he's on vacation i it was my turn to take care of them and try to console them make them happy play with them and i have a baby in my arms and i'm facing i'm facing i'm not looking at the beach i'm facing the baby and the cabana is wrapped around me so the only the front of the cabana is open all three babies are crying and a lady comes over and scoops up dawson and she's holding dawson and she is saying things like, mommy and daddy are really stressed, aren't they? And she's bouncing Dawson. And I'm, at this point, I'm screaming, put my baby down, put my baby down. And Steve and I are both standing there like, what is this woman doing? Put my baby down. And she's not putting her down. And she's just bouncing her, saying like, saying rude things and like belittling Steve and I while we're right there as if we're not right there. It was so bizarre saying things like, mommy's really stressed right now, isn't she? You're, you guys are really stressing mommy and daddy out right now. And again, I'm just screaming, put my baby down. And I'm, and I'm so shocked that I don't take Dawson out of her arms. Unless you're in that position, I please don't comment anything negative on that. Unless you're in that position, I think that it's very likely that you would freeze too and just think, what is happening right now? And it felt like it lasted like 10 minutes. It didn't, it lasted probably 30 seconds of this woman just holding my, my baby, but I'm getting so anxious right now even talking about it. But um, yeah, it was only like 30 seconds. She puts Dawson down and Steve and I are like, like this face I'm making right now, like just shocked. Steve and I are just shocked, like literally. Like I could cry right now, even just the feeling of someone picking up my baby and me trying to tell them to put my baby down and they're not. So she puts Dawson down. Again, Steve and I are staring at each other and we decide, okay, let's go back to the room and this isn't working out right now. The girls are tired. Let's try again tomorrow. And we weren't upset about this. We knew like sometimes things can be challenging with babies. It's their first time on the beach. Let's just go and hit refresh and we'll start over tomorrow. So we're both shaken up by what had just happened, but 
we just need to we just need to go and leave the beach so um we get back to our room and if you have a baby babies whatever you know and being in a new environment for a baby to sleep it's hard but um we had three pack in place for them we get back to the room get them settled get them fed put them all to bed make the room dark and try to make them as comfortable as possible and we walk to the lanai and they're not sleeping not sleeping which you know that just adds to stress and um finally we get them to sleep at like eight o'clock probably and steve and i are like okay well now we really can't leave the room now there's like they're sleeping and we that's it they're sleeping but we steve and i haven't eaten at this point and we don't have any food in the room and um uh, they don't have room service so steve's like okay i'll just go downstairs there there's like a little quick service place where you can go and order something and bring it back to your room where you can eat there um so steve goes gives us, gets us food and we're just trying to be quiet so we are in the hallway of the hotel eating our dinner and i'm totally not one to complain about food like i if my food is cold like i literally don't care i'm i don't make a big deal about that kind of stuff it's food if unless it's like undercooked or something i don't really care you know um, but this was really bad. It was like so dry. It was complete like what it was like I needed like a gallon of water just to finish it It was a grilled chicken sandwich. So, you know, like if grilled chicken is overcooked, it's just like You it's like you're sucking on cotton. So that didn't help but Again, I was like whatever I I ate half of it because I was freaking hungry and there was um, Steve's not gonna go back downstairs and go get more food and deal with that whole thing. We're just like whatever so we get back in the room, the babies are awake, they wake up, they were up until like four in the morning. We finally get them back to sleep and all three wake up at seven. So we're tired and um, we're tired, but again, we're gonna make the best of this whole experience. It's our first vacation. This is the first real day of our vacation. So let's just start over and it's gonna be a great day. So um, we, can't, we come up with a plan on this day that, um, the girls need to sleep. They haven't, they slept horrible the night before and no matter what, we need to at least make sure that they get a nap and the girls sleep great in the car. So we figured, okay, so instead of going down to the beach this morning, there's a great splash pad and pool area. Let's go eat breakfast. We'll take the girls to the splash pad and then during nap, let's go out. We'll go out and you and I, Steve and I will get food and the girls can sleep in the car. So that's what we did. We went down for breakfast in the morning which by the way, we were sitting at breakfast outside. I was feeding the girls some yogurt and the same woman comes up or the same woman passes by and she's like, I see everyone's in good moods today and Steve, and just walks by. Like I genuinely, I don't, I could not tell if she knew that she was being horrible or if she really just thought she was helping us the day before. And the next day she was like, oh great. I'm so glad everything's good. But to me, I was like, this woman needs to leave us alone. To me, it was like, I'm so glad everything's great today, guys. And like, like we were such, we like, we were disturbing her so much on the beach the day before that she thought that harassing us the second day was going to be appropriate. Um, so when she walked away, Steve were like, what is with that woman? But she disappears. That is the last time we saw her on this trip. Thank God. Um, but we eat breakfast. We go over to the splash pad. The girls have a great time. They, that was like the best five minutes on our trip was when we were at the splash pad. So thank you guys so much for the splash pad. Anyway. Um, so then we, they're, we, I could tell they were getting tired, didn't want to push it. We left, we went back to the room, got them in warm clothes, packed up the car again, uh, just on top of like the stress from the day before and lack of sleep, please just try to remember that nothing with triplets is easy. Going from the, going from the splash pad back to the room, from the room to the car, it's not easy. I just like. I'm not complaining, but it's not easy. And I think that's something that made this trip so much more difficult because I was trying to have such a good attitude. But on top of our normal stress, it was just, okay, anyway. So we go out, thank God the girls ended up falling asleep in the car. They fell asleep for like an hour and a half. We went to a grocery store and just got some deli meat and some things for the room so we could have just some sandwiches for lunch. And we get back to the room and we're like, okay, the girls slept, let's try the beach again because we're not gonna come all the way to the ocean and not go and see the ocean. You know, I wanted my babies to put their feet in the ocean for the first time. Little things like that meant a lot to me. They mean a lot to me. Um, So we pack up again and 
we're just so friggin' tired. We're so tired, but we're doing it because this is what you do when you're on vacation. Could you friggin' imagine I just did 19 minutes of this video with lipstick on my teeth? I wouldn't, re I would not redo it. So we go, we pack everything back up, put the girls' bathing suits back on. We go back down to the beach. We walk out to the pier. We're looking over the beach and we see an open cabana. The beach is much more busy this day. It's earlier in the day. Uh, it's also a Saturday, but whatever. If there's an open cabana, we're gonna go down and use it. So we drag the strollers across the sand. We're sweating, we're exhausted. The babies are again fussy because just like they don't wanna be trapped in a stroller. They don't wanna be in a car seat. They just wanna be one years old and they wanna play. So when we already are a scene, you know, we, we don't want to call people's attention, but we do no matter what. But so we drag everything across the sand, we see an open cabana, we unpack everything. This takes us about 20 minutes again. Everyone's looking, everyone's asking, oh my God, triplets. And you know, I respond to one family, but every family is really listening. So now every family around us knows that we have triplets and everybody's watching us. So we get unpacked, the girls are happy. I give them all their toys and their thing. Steve and I both sit down. We open up a beer and then I hear, excuse me, are you guys the Barrett family? And my heart dropped down into my butt. And I said, no, why? And he said, well, actually the Barrett family rented this cabana for the entire day. And Steve and I looked at each other and we were like, okay. And he was like, so I can set up another cabana for you if you want. And we're like, we're just like, okay, no, like just no. So I look past him and Mrs. Barrett is just standing there like this with her arms crossed, just like staring at us. Like, I can't believe these people are in my cabana. Now at this point, we're so stressed and not only stressed, but now we're humiliated because we had just caused this whole scene. Everybody's staring at us. Everyone's thinking, oh, those poor parents, you know? And then we get kicked out of the cabana. And there's not a single sign anywhere around us that says cabanas must be rented. Or nowhere does it even say like this cabana's rented. You know, there's nothing like that. And if there had been, then it would have been our fault. I would have said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't see that this cabana was rented. You know, like there was nothing. And this is the second day that we're there. And again, there's nothing. But Steve and I get up. And at this point I have tears streaming down my face because I'm defeated. I'm just so done. And, but I'm holding it together and I'm putting my babies back in their stroller and I'm cleaning up their toys. And you know, now they're upset because I'm taking away their toys. But we clean everything up and FYI, nobody offers to help us. In that situation, if I ever saw a family struggling like that, I would help them. I would never, watching someone struggle kills me. I would never, I would never sit by and stare. But I think people were so shocked that like they couldn't believe that we were, that this was happening to us, that people were like, oh my God, like people were afraid to say anything. And the lady who did rent the cabana just stood there. You know, she just stood there and she watched us struggle and pack up and walk away. And we were just, the, the I, can, I can deal with being tired. I can deal with fussy babies. I can deal with, I can deal with the stress. What I cannot deal with is being humiliated and being, and being, and being made to feel like, I don't even know, it was just humiliating. We were humiliated and we were so defeated. So we pack everything and I'm, tears are streaming down my face. I'm just like, it's just like a silent cry because I was just so defeated. Steve was just like, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I cannot believe that they're doing this to us. Like that you could, if you can easily set up a cabana, don't you think that that you could have offered to that woman? Like, oh, I'm so sorry. This happens all the time. We don't have signs up, but let's set you up another cabana right now. And maybe we'll offer you $10 to the bar or whatever, you know, like if you don't have signs, this is what you must get a lot. Um, so we go up and there is somewhere up there where you can rent things like, like ski doos or whatever, but still nowhere on it does it say that you can rent a cabana. Um, but we go up there and we're like, are you like, we talked to the guy and we're like, 
we understand this, that it's not your fault, but you don't have a sign anywhere. We have triplets. And, and do you know how much work that just took for us to get down to the beach? And now, like, look at what you've just done to us as a family. Like, this is exhausting. And you, you, we were humiliated. And the guy was like, I know, I'm so sorry. I've been telling my management that we need to have signs saying that they're rented. But I have one of my guys out there for you right now setting up, a, setting up another cabana. Points over to this guy in a completely secluded area which only made it worse. It was so far from everyone else. Like, we wanna feel like a normal family. This is our first vacation. Make us feel welcome. You know, make us feel like another regular family. Make, like, I just wanna feel normal. I can deal with the stress. I can deal with anything, you know, but just accept us. Make us feel welcome and normal, you know? So Steve and I are like, no, thank you. We're, we're all set. So we're walking away. Now I'm I'm still just crying. Like I'm I'm just humiliated and I'm crying and Steve is like I'm just done. Like let's go talk to the front desk because our experience has been horrible. It's just been absolutely horrible. And the things I've told you, those are only the major things, but we had so many other small things that would never happen at another resort. You know, it would never even be like it wouldn't, if, if even one of those little things happen, it would be like a big deal at another resort, you know? So I'm only telling you like the major things that happen, FYI. I, I don't want you to think like, we're just going to the front desk because we're dramatic people. We're not, like this is like the 10th thing that's happened and we're just like, let's just go to the front desk. Let's just see what they can do for us because this is ridiculous, you know? So we get to the front desk and Steve's trying to tell the manager what happens and this is when Steve starts crying. I'm sorry Steve if you don't want me to tell people that but like if you guys know Steve, he's so nice. You know, like he doesn't he doesn't want to make anyone uncomfortable. He would never complain. Like Steve's the very last one to complain. Steve would way rather himself be completely uncomfortable than ever inconvenience someone even if it's a business you know but i see steve start crying and then i'm like this right now i'm like steve let's come back because i don't want to cause a scene at the front desk so i'm saying steve do you want to come back in a little bit like maybe we can go back to the room and like just cry for a little bit and then come back but steve is like no and he you know he can like stop crying like that me you know i'm just like even worse because now like but once I see Steve cry, like it's over. Like that's like that's like my okay. I'm like okay now I can really just let it out, and I'm still trying not to. I'm still just like trying to like silently cry in the lobby, but like I'm just so just tired and defeated that it's, like tears are just streaming down my face. And so Steve's telling the story to the front desk manager, and she is literally looking at Steve like this. And then Steve tells the story. She watches us cry. She watches the whole thing. And she's like, I'm so sorry that this has happened to you. And she's like, I don't even know what to do. She's like, I'm so sorry. Can we make it up to you? What do you want? What do you want us to do? And Steve is thinking, like, we don't say this out loud, but we're thinking, we don't want to tell you what you should do for us. We want you to be a manager and do the right thing and just say, you know what? I want to make it up to you and I want to turn your vacation around so this is what I'm gonna do you know like Steve and I are just like we don't know you know like we we're sitting here with triplets we're crying we don't know what our options are and that's why we're coming to you but we have no clue what to say so Steve's just like can we have our money back like we'll just leave can we can we just go and the manager is so quick to be like okay yes Sure, Mr. Richmond, I'll go ahead and refund your last night. Like, didn't even refund our first night, whatever. I'll go ahead and refund your for your last night right now, and you guys are free to go whenever. So, Steve and I are just like, let's go. Let's just leave. Do they even offer to send a bell card up to our room? Do they offer any assistance? No. And FYI, this isn't the freaking Motel 6. This is a nice resort. This is a nice resort you know because if we're gonna take our first family vacation we're not we're gonna take a nice vacation we're gonna take we're gonna take it somewhere that's nice and family friendly and this is not the experience that we got at all so we get up to our room and I end up calling down for a bell cart myself and 
the lady brings it up one just a front desk worker brings it up and she's like I'm really sorry about that would you guys like help get into your car and at this point I'm like no thank you we're all set and yeah that's it that is it then we we drove the hour and a half home I cried the whole way I was so just upset and you know like the thing that is the most upsetting is just that like that's time that was supposed to be our first family vacation you know like we've taken the girls to New York a few times but it's always for something and it's it's always for a wedding or an event and those are great but like we have never taken a vacation Steve and I have been married for four years and we haven't even taken our honeymoon. So we were just hoping for just a good family experience, you know? Like, I didn't even care that the babies were with us. I wanted us there. You know, I didn't, it didn't have to be like a romantic Steve and Allie giveaway, getaway. I just wanted it to be a nice time for our family. And we did not get that. So we will not get that time back. Unfortunately, it was nice that they refunded our last night, the night we didn't even stay because typically a hotel, like once you pay, you pay. But yeah that's that was our nightmare story i'm so sorry i cried throughout like the whole thing but i have really tried to just like bury that story like the i don't even think my mom and my dad know that this that stranger picked up dawson I, like it was just su such a crazy moment for us that we were just like in shock and i literally just buried that story i buried it and then we were telling steve's cousin and steve's cousin was like you need to put that on youtube so I asked you guys if you wanted to hear it, and I know you. I knew you guys wanted to. I asked on Instagram. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you should, because we're there every day. Um, okay. Well, I guess that's our. That's it. That's my very first story time. My very first very emotional story time. I hope you guys liked it. Um, I do have a video coming out either tomorrow or the day after, a few days from now. Um, that's just a vlog. Um, but hopefully you guys watch it. And I do address the fact that I'm at 75,000 subscribers in that video, but this is coming out first, so thank you guys so much for helping me get there. You guys are awesome. I love you. And if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be comfortable enough to sit here and cry and share this horrible story with you guys. Um, I hope that none of you guys have a story like that. If you do and you want to share it, leave it in the comments because maybe we can all just cry together. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.